Good afternoon, everybody. So sorry to bring you from lunch and uh, be the first after lunch. And uh, hope this presentation will give you some uh, insights and some uh, good data. So uh, my name is Jamal, uh, GM at Microsoft, working out of the Paris offices, leading a uh, engineering organization. And uh, I thought instead of uh, introducing myself and giving you uh, boring details about what I do, I will lay the video just speak by itself, and as we say, a video is much better than 1,000 slides. Video, please. Hey, music experiences are fragmented. Too often you juggle multiple apps and go in and out of several services to access your music across devices. Managing music has become hard. To solve this problem, Microsoft is introducing Xbox Music, a brand new all-in-one service built from the ground up to meet all your music needs across your tablet, PC, phone, and TV. Xbox Music features free music streaming on all Windows 8 and Windows RT tablets and PCs, artist-based radio, music subscription, and a marketplace to purchase songs from one of the world's largest music catalogs. Everything you need to explore new music, learn about an artist, or enjoy a playlist is right there in front of you. Just type the name of your favorite artist, and Xbox Music will access their top songs and albums. You can immediately stream them for free on all Windows 8 and Windows RT tablets and PCs. If you like artist-based radio, simply tap Smart DJ. Choose an artist you like, and Smart DJ will create a playlist featuring that artist and related content. Unlike other services, Xbox Music allows you unlimited skipping, letting you choose the songs you want to hear. Xbox Music organizes your favorite songs into one convenient place. My Music shows everything you've downloaded, streamed in a playlist, or purchased, making your music experience simple and elegant. Add an Xbox Music Pass, and with a swipe and a tap, you can add songs to any playlist. And because Xbox Music is connected to the cloud, those playlists follow you across your tablet, PC, phone, and your Xbox 360. Xbox Music. All the music you love, every way you want it. So uh, this tells you exactly what we have built uh, recently, and um, I was definitely one with the team, obviously, to have uh, get us to that stage. And I thought I will share with you some experiences that we had, really based on that uh, wonderful product that we have just launched. And um, it will be my personal perception and opinion on the way we uh, went through the entire technology assessments and how we got really to the cloud big um, decision as I will uh, motivate it across the presentation. So what I will do now is to start with what we believe the user behavior is and I'm going to state the obvious for all of you. I'm sure that you all know all of it but I think the, 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 the if I may say the theory or the, um, the secret will be in putting all the different user behavior that we have identified into the puzzle and uh, build the story around it such that we make decisions when it comes to uh, cloud scenarios and cloud platforms. So we all know that users are online. I think nobody would dispute it. Two billion internet users. The internet is 20 years old this year. One billion of these users are connected to social networks. Still two billion out of seven billion is a way to go. Two thirds of the, the population is still to be connected. But uh, this phenomenal broadcast medium gives us the opportunities to think about new business models. If I take the US as an example, digital ad spending is about an even more than $30 billion, which is still 20% of the entire ad spending in the US only. And this gives the opportunities obviously, uh, obviously to uh, new business models to be implemented and to get and gain market share compared to offline uh, ad spendings. Uh, this, is, this is just a nutshell on what it means for the user to be always online. At the same time, users are social. I think uh, many of you are representing social companies, so I'm not going to teach you anything new here, other than saying Facebook is reaching the one billion users, which is half of the internet population as we speak. This is phenomenal. Looking at YouTube, 800 million. These are numbers based on internal Google uh, research. 800 million unique users consuming YouTube on a monthly basis. This 
could be translated into more than three billion hours of consumption on YouTube sites. This is what we're speaking about. Social means being connected. In the US, 25 million users, tw sorry, the, the average user spending on social networks is about 25 minutes. Multiply this by the number of users, multiply this by obviously the other countries. So we're speaking about a phenomenal number of minutes and hours and, and, and days and years and, and uh, I'd say cycles spent on social networks. What I'm trying to show you here is, I didn't put the name of the company just for the sake of uh, being totally uh, neutral. What this shows you is a company that has used Facebook as a means to increase its customer base. It went within less than a year from 15 million users up to 25 million users just by integrating with Facebook Open Graph. So this gives obviously Facebook the, 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 the pole position to invite companies to use their install base, but this, this gives also third party companies to benefit from that install base and build new business models. Moving on, users are mobile. We know this. Everybody knows that uh, we have more than a mobile phone. But what is new here is that for the first time, smartphone users will be surpassing feature phones. 1.2 billion is the number that Gartner has recently, in November by the way, Gartner Research has predicted for 2003 in terms of the number of smartphone users. 1 billion mobile internet users across the globe today, one half of the internet population again. And I can go on and go on. Mobile broadband is going to surpass, by far, fixed broadband. By 2015, Boston Consulting is expecting 2 billion broadband mobile users. Compare this with only five mi 500 million fixed mobile uh, broadband users. So we know that the, the world is going mobile. We know that the world is going social. We know that everybody is online. What we know as well, and this is just my personal perception, but this is also driven and confirmed by many, many research and many facts at the end of the day. There's only one user. There's no enterprise user versus customer user anymore. We only speak about one user. That one single user doesn't care about technologies, doesn't care about which device it's, uh, it's used. It doesn't care about any environment the user is. We all have mobile phones, and we use mobile phones for both, professional and private purposes. And we don't necessarily make the difference between both. What we want is, whatever device we use, we want the entire information to be available out there. Be it private social networking, or be it reading our mails, because on vacation, we need just to respond to this very important and very urgent mail. So, connected, social, mobile, one user. I'm trying really to provoke here saying no enterprise, no private, it's just about us. And it's just about me being able to consume whatever I want to consume, no matter where, at any time, and no matter the device I'm using. And guess what? I'm continuing the provocation here to say, end users, they don't want to work, they just want it to work. And want it to work in the sense of they don't want to be obliged to install applications or to use USB keys to synchronize their content across the devices or do any fancy FTP stuff that, you know, my mother doesn't understand, for instance. So all I'm trying to say here is that the industry understood this. If you look at Apple, if you look at Microsoft, if you look at Google, I would go on and uh, include Amazon into this. They totally understood that the fact that end users don't want to work obliges them to come up with platforms. It's not about software anymore, it's not about services anymore, it's not about less about hardware more and more, it's about a platform. The platform that enables you to consume iTunes on iPads and iPhones, the platform that enables you to consume Xbox on Xbox devices, on Windows 8 machines, on Windows Phone 8 uh, mobile phones, etc., etc. And also the platform that enables you to consume Kindle and uh, what have we, and expect Amazon to go on and on, and expect Google to go on as well. So it's all about building all of this together into platforms, 
and building it in a way that the end user doesn't care anymore about the devices they're using and about the, uh, the, the applications they are building or they, they are consuming on which devices. Number six and the last one and the last observation about user behavior. Users want their content to follow them. They want their profiles to follow them. They want their history to follow them. They want their state to follow them. They don't want really to have different states, different content, or different profiles on different devices. This, at the end of the day, is building, and we're observing it in the industry, is building what you can call an overlay network, or an overlay platform, better said, that will enable the users to totally abstract from the devices they're using. And all they care about is, where is my profile? And you know, no matter whether I'm using an application or the web, whether I'm using a mobile phone or my TV screen, my profile follows me. And my content follows me. And my purchase history follows me as well. So just let's step back a second and see what would be the best means and the best technology and the best platform to use to enable this last one, especially the last one. So I want me as a user, I want everything to be available everywhere on every device. And I don't care about whether now I'm doing some work and just you know 30 minutes later I'm doing some private entertainment stuff and go back to work and then uh, back and forth. I'm not encouraging anybody to use Facebook at work, by the way. I'm just saying that you know this is matter of fact. This is definitely a world where private and professional behaviors are just converging with each other and are getting closer and closer and where devices, no matter how powerful the device is, don't matter anymore. What matters is the platform that is proposed to the end user to establish profiles and to consume entertainment, work, what have we. And uh, at the end of the day, and this is really all I said motivating me to put stake in the ground here and say cloud technologies have been proving themselves as the only means so far and as far as I know to enable the combination of these six behavior to be a reality. Especially the last one again, I want my profile and my content and my media, my work, my uh, uh, friends, my community, whatever I have to follow me everywhere I go at any time and on any device. So we at Microsoft, and uh, forgive me uh, maybe to spend a few minutes in telling you how we use the cloud, at least uh, mapped to our problematics and mapped to our uh, situation to resolve these kinds of behaviors in uh, obviously a try to give and provide the end user with the best experience possible when it comes to music, but you know, you can apply it to video. I'm sure you can apply it also to enterprise offerings at the end of the day. So what we have done is we asked ourselves, we want to grow and we want scale. And scale doesn't just come by uh, accident. It is planned and we have realized that cloud enables us and using cloud as a concept enables us to scale. And scale you can define in multiple manners. Scale to multiple countries, scale in terms of offerings, scale also in terms of customer base, and uh, obviously scale in terms of content types. So as we have been designing Xbox Music to be launched in 35 countries with 30 million in our uh, music catalog, we ask ourselves where, whether we wanted really to build all the different machines and servers in-house, or whether we wanted to rely on somebody else, call it the cloud. We are lucky enough at Microsoft to have internal cloud solution called Azure, but you know, uh, I'm sure that other companies who don't necessarily have that uh, platform and offering are relying also on equivalent or if not uh, the Azure solution itself. So we built anything that we needed based on Azure in a way that we didn't really need to do any, any investments in terms of CapEx to get where we wanted to go. So we started small and we grew as our business is growing. And that will continue. So that's scale. The second thing that we have realized is that we wanted to be as agile as possible. Believe it or not, 
we as an entity are paying also money to our friends at Azure, although the same company, the same uh, cash flow, but we're paying money to these guys. So we need it to scale our business accordingly and we pay as we go. And that's the agility that Azure has offered us. This is ag agility. And then uh, we have been also realizing that we needed uh, the means to not only scale and get agility, uh, but also drive for time to market in the sense of I need to react immediately. There is an event happening in the US. I want to broadcast it all over the globe. How am I going to do it? Am I going just to purchase hardware and install them and get through the data centers, etc., etc.? I can go on. Like, you know, I can really write a book about this and write a book about all the different challenges and problems that you may and, and, and we indeed faced in the past to get just, you know, a setup of a live event uh, that uh, scales across the globe. With Azure, all we needed to do is just click on a couple of buttons, reserve some capacity. We don't even know where that capacity is in terms of compute or in terms of storage, and then just go with it. Indeed, we will pay for that capacity, but at the end of the day, we don't necessarily manage it. We don't invest human resources or machines or capex to manage all of this. It's all transparent to us. So this is, this is really what we have gained by relying on Azure for our scale, for our agility, and uh, as I said, for the time to market. At the end, what we have accomplished uh, recently is launching this service in 35 countries, launching it with uh, the scale we wanted it. We have bundled it with Windows 8, PC, tablet, whatever you call it, and we are expecting tens and tens of millions of users all across the globe to use our services without us having invested or installed any single machine in any data center. Uh, with that, I would love to take uh, some questions after the video that I would love to show you as well. And that video is more, uh, I would say, glory, more music-ish. Uh, and uh, after that, very, very happy to take any questions you have. Thank you. You know we feel as up high, we on the ground with it It's your choice, tell me now is you down with it It's your choice, baby now are you down with it Thank you. Any questions, welcome. Don't be shy. Be shy. I'm approaching you little to little, but I, I will never reach you. Hello, uh, Ivan from EMI Music. One quick question regarding API, uh, do you plan to open an API to allow developers to play with uh, your service, integrate and bring value maybe to it? Thank you for the question. Uh, obviously, uh, coming from EMI, no uh, secret and no, uh, I'd say, wonder. <laughs> um, yes, this is the answer. And uh, usually we don't comment on our plans, as you know. But in this particular case, uh, the answer is very obvious. Thank you. That's direct we <laughs> and short. Uh, a question? Ah. Could you raise your hand again? Because I just uh, recognize your hand, not your face. So who is, okay. 
Hello, uh, Gregory Moses from Meda Pharma. It's more a question Hello. like a user. What are the main differences between Xbox Music and uh, iTunes for you? Because already in iTunes, I can convert everything from my iPhone, iMac, and everywhere. And I can uh, already collect some uh, music from uh, every kind on the internet too. Yeah. Um, by the way, as I was asked to come here to present, I was promising myself not to sell Microsoft, just to be clear on that. And uh, I hope I did uh, a good job, or good enough job, not to overdo it. You're asking the question, the answer to this, and I'm going to try to be brief. Uh, iTunes is definitely to be compared to Xbox, not Xbox Music, just to be really at parity. Xbox is the entertainment brand of Microsoft. Initially, Xbox was the gaming console, and we turned this into the entertainment brand of the company. Now, if you, your specific question is about iTunes music versus Xbox music, my answer to that is that iTunes doesn't have any free or streaming capabilities, and this is something that we have built from day one into the design of the offering. I like one of the journalists in the US commenting on Xbox music, saying that it has it all. It has iTunes, it has Pandora, and it has Spotify in one place. Again, I, I don't want really to comment further about the competition, but that's, that's definitely my personal uh, opinion about what Xbox Music is versus other offerings.